Ladies and gentlemen of that humble internet, welcome back. Name is Ryan, aka the Ryman. And this is some more Winds of Change. Why are we back with Winds of Change? Well, as much as I've been slowly going insane from this entire franchise made by Clace, Clace Husky, I still have to. I I've made a promise, and I still have to go through with it. I can't keep walking away from games. I have to complete what I start. And Winds of Change was a game that I started. But hey, at least I left on a bit of a high note. The last time we were here, we were on a, sh a ship. Someone brought a band. I'm kind of hoping it's going to bump up. Morale is at 15. I'm apparently a very pure boy. <laughs> Let's see if the music wants to kick back on. It do. It do. It do. We have traveled long and come so far I've got work Wednesday morning. I'm blasting this stuff over the speakers. Just bulldozing through those red lights. <laughs> so as I'm having these heart-to-heart -heart talks, I'm... I, I'm assuming that, you know, the, while the pirates are just singing this with, wh with whatever band they've got going. Let's do this! Heart-to-heart -heart on the sea! The sea of hearts! I'm coming up with random lines, something that's gonna have to be a tagline or title of this video, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> it only wants to play when I'm on the deck of the ship. I guess that makes sense if that's where the crew is just singing away. Dominic sits in a bed, staring down at the pennant and I saw him hold back at the HQ. Please excuse any yawns that I'm having, Mr. Clace. It's not from the story, it's the fact that I'm doing this recording at like 12.30 at night. But Ryan, I can hear you probably wondering, why are you doing- Why are you doing YouTube recordings 12.30 at night when you know no one's gonna be watching th these videos? It's because I've lost control of my life. There's your answer. He had, a, uh, he had faced death and come out of the other side. That would change any man. Except Batman. But what happened while he was gone? That's a question that's been on my mind. I approached cautiously, careful not to startle him out of his uh, reverie. When I get close to him, he looks up at me, making no effort to hide his tears. He finally had time to process everything that happened back in those tunnels. I was such a fool, Monarch. Shane tricked me. I was careless. I should have never let him get close to me. It's kind of what happens. He knew my weakness and exploited it. He made me so happy to see him again. I thought I was finally ready. Ready for... Weakness? What does he mean? Will you have a seat with me, Monarch? I guess I should tell you the truth of what happened. From the sidelines, I must have looked incompetent. Hmm. I mean, I'm trained in combat, you know. I should have been able to avoid Shane's dagger with ease. It's what they're all thinking, even if they don't say anything. He literally did a Lannister sends their regards to you, dude. I don't think anyone is going to be like, what a bitch. With his interest peak, with my, with, well, of course his interest is peak. My buddy is playing Dead Frontier 2. That's a game I should probably return to because they did some changes. With my interest peaked, I sit down beside Zadamik. He puts the pen into one of his pockets and turns to face me. I could tell that he, his crying spell is over. He was more calm and collected. Back during the occupation, my parents were killed. I saw them murder my father with no hesitation. Blood. Everywhere. After that, my mother took my hand and tried to find us some shelter. We didn't make it very far. We saw all the bodies in the town square. Mountains of them. The ground was full of blood. 
almost like an ocean. If you look closely, you can still see some of the stains, even today. That's a rough one. This seems unrelated to Shane's attack, but I sit and listen. He told me he'd tell me the truth, so I should see where this goes. My mother made a judgment call and did something risky. What's the one place they would never look for survivors? That's right, amongst the corpses, covered and crushed by them. Your mother was a very smart woman. I was crying, but she helped me get underneath a bunch of bodies. She played dead and lay on the outside, holding my hand as tight as she could. I remember how she kept telling me that everything would be okay. That soft whisper. Mr. Ryder, probably more than a wow. Probably something along the lines of a holy fucking hell. She didn't make it very long. They found her and stabbed her over and over. I felt her wince every time. The grip of my hand got tighter and tighter. Then, after a while, it just let go. I got to feel her final moments. Jesus fucking Christ! Clay, so you writing this shit as I fucking do this playthrough? Way to go from zero to sixty! Holy crap! Ryan, you literally just shit all over your, your attempt to stop swearing so much. Yeah, and I know I keep breaking my that rule, because I can't help it. You go 31 years when you have a gutter mouth. I'm sorry. It's very hard to break it. This is like, what? What? The voice telling me that everything would be okay soon went silent. I was left there, under a pile of bodies, covered in blood. The last embrace I remember, the last time I held a hand. That puts my shit in perspective. I don't, I don't do the whole cugging or hand-holding thing because I have this a strong distaste for people that I don't want to get into right now. But it wasn't because I was covered in dead bodies. Wow! It's not something I could ever do again. It just reminds me of that day. Now you understand how Shane made me freeze in fear and surprise. He was the only other person I told this to. He used that to trick me. God damn! He he knew you would freeze and start having a god a, a fucking PTSD moment when you hugged him. That's low. Oh! Congratulations, Mr. Clace. If the, if the goal of the writer is to make their audience feel something, you done done dare did it. Bravo, Mr. Clace! That's metal! And he would have killed me too. If it wasn't for you and Hal, I was finally ready to get close to somebody again. And then this happens. That's how I know Shane wasn't just acting. He played dirty. And he wanted me dead. There was so much running through my mind the moment he stabbed me. I thought perhaps he was trying to win over the triumvirate so he could get more intel. But then he stabbed me again. And again. I knew that the man I once knew was gone. They did something to him while he was imprisoned. They won him over. I don't know how they did it, but they turned him into a completely different person. We must never let another one of our allies fall under their thrall. Never. What, you got a cache of suicide capsules? The cyanide capsules, you know, the stuff you put in your teeth? I nod, agreeing with Dominic. Th that was a horrible story. Going through that as a child? His aversion of physical contact makes perfect sense now. I mean, it's not like I'm gonna go start 
hugging people all of a sudden or doing that physical contact stuff, but... Holy hell, it, it really puts it into perspective. It's like... Maybe I could do the handshake thing with people all of a sudden, because... I've never been covered in dead bodies. Huh. And Shane is an awful person having taken advantage of that. Startling Dominic, making him relive those memories and killing him? That was despicable. Sorry for dropping all of that on you, Monarch. I just needed to tell somebody. It was eating away at me. And I trust you. I know you'd never do anything like Shane did. That's going to be a new personal goal of mine, Dominic. Every day with people that I meet. Don't... You know, do that. Don't... Don't take s s personal information y and, and use that to kill them. W wow. That goes without saying. However, the, the room soon falls to silence. Dominic fidgets awkwardly. Clearly nervous. Well, I guess that's enough to kill any conversation. Like I said, I'm sorry for dropping all of that on you. Anything else you need to say to me while you can? When did this game... When did this game get an update? These were not the same icons. Oh my god. Clace is working on this game at the same time that I'm going through it. Oh god. Okay, so, oh, okay, I gotta remember. Uh, this is neutral. Uh, this is ro romance. I'm... Uh, no. No! Uh, not everybody will hurt you, Dominic. Opening up is a good thing. There's that, or being the... Can I do a combination of the first and third? Because, like, oh my god! Like, dude, I am so sorry that happened to you! That sucks! But it, not everyone will hurt you. Opening up can be a good thing. It's good to vent. It's good to scream into the void sometimes. Even if... There's not even an echo back. Maybe, maybe I will go with the first one because that, maybe that's a, a good thing. That, that's something. That, that's a good thing to you to tell a friend. I tell my friends all the time. You know, feel free to vent. You don't. You literally don't need me to give a response. I won't do. I won't say nothing unless you just you look me in the eye and and ask. I have no fr problem people opening up and venting. Sometimes you gotta vent. Sometimes you just gotta scream. It's easy to say that, but it's harder to actually try. Yeah, that's Especially true. Especially when you've had a track record like I have. Yeah, that's true. I want to, but there's just something stopping me, you know? You know, that's completely understandable, man. You don't have to get there all at once. I'm not asking you to. I would never try to force that. But it's good to have it in the back of your mind. That's all, dude. That's all. Like, holy fuck. Like, holy fuck. It's nothing against you. Or anyone else I consider a friend. I just have to put this barrier up for my own benefit. I don't want to hurt anybody either, actually. That's cool. This is war. I almost died back in the Rebel HQ. <laughs> well, you did. did. Can you imagine the pain my allies would feel? Getting close to somebody in a time like this would be a disaster. You're absolutely right, my guy. He smiles and gets out of bed. I do so as well. I could tell that he was ready to end this conversation. Well, should we call it then? I think this is as good a time as any. Let that new information process for a while. Mm-hmm! Yeah. I need a drink. When it comes to my past, that's about it. From now on... We can look to the future. 
I hope it's just as bright as I picture it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I, oh, people are going to die. With that, he walks away from me and backs up to and back up to the deck. I was glad that he liked me enough to tell me about his past. It was my duty to never take advantage of that, like Shane did. Why are so many assholes named Shane? Like, if I had a son, and I named him Shane, I'd be like, Oh, yes, your purpose is to be a dick. Okay, Hal, you're up next. I don't know what order I'm going to be doing this. T time for your second heart to heart. Already, second heart to heart. Hal stares off into the ocean, deep in contemplation. I imagine that uh, uh, he have a lot to think about and a lot to process. Last time we talked, he seemed conflicted about whether or not uh, he f he fit in. Monarch. Stop calling me that, but Howley. He turns to face me and gives me a small wave, welcoming me. I stand beside him and stare off in the ocean together. The sun causes us uh, causes it to glisten, sparkling with a gentle beauty. We're still conflicted. These thoughts won't go away. Visions of needless violence and senseless destruction. You may tell us that they aren't real, but we are unsure. The emotions that well up within us are far too real. Is it possible for fake events to elicit real emotions? Or are we perhaps hearing echoes of the past? Oh, damn, man, it's too late at n slash early in the morning for this kind of philosophical shit. Echoes of the past? What does he mean? Let us phrase it differently. You know visions, yes? Yes. The monarchy used them to guide us to the best possible future. How can you know that best possible future without trial and error? There would still be many futures left unseen and many pasts avoided. Knowing one true course of action requires disregarding millions of wrong ones. What if we are simply seeing these many avenues? Almost like our visions have evolved. If not evolved, then perhaps gotten muddled. Rather than see the one important future, we see everything. We do not know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, Monarch. Kind of makes sense when you think about when you do a little meth and then think about it. Seeing the uh, the best possible future is like one side of a coin. The other side still exists, and it's left covered up, unseen. Many wrong futures, many wrong choices made. The mind uh, likely blocked these out for a reason. Maybe he's sensitive after escaping his prison. If this is true, then we exist unbound from time. A string in a labyrinth, with no one holding the other side. No one to tug, no one to guide us in the right direction. No one, of course, except for you. Our visions may be useless at the moment, but are yours. We would recommend that you try inducing a vision, Monarch. Just inducing it, right here, right now? Right now, of course. Oh, okay. But in your own time. However, when you do, we would request a favor. If you see the future, embrace it. But also, look into the past. The future you see blossoms from choice and consequence. Look back at those choices made and conjure up the choices unmade. The loss, the heartbreak, the death. Maybe then you will know what pains us. He's plagued with bad visions. He no longer sees the one true future. He sees everything. And that's a curse that I, I would wish upon nobody. I guess, yeah, when you see everything, you really see nothing at all. Can't even imagine how many times he's, he's seen all us all die, and for what? There is only one thing that remains constant throughout these visions. Yourself, the Blade of Exodus, and the death it feeds off of. There is something self-serving about all three of these things. You always have that blade, and the people around you always die when they do. It's almost like that makes the blade more powerful. 
It's like there's an essence released from our bodies when we pass on. But is that the essence of life? Or the essence of death? Perhaps that is a choice the wielder of the blade must make. What do you think, Monarch? When is we... that energy life? Or is it death? When we die, I think our spirit is released. That's our life. If the energy is released when we die, then it's made of death. Huh. Hmm. I don't know, let's be upbeat, shall we? An interesting thought, to say the least. If it's up to the wielder, at least we know where you stand. That blade is such a mysterious thing, and it grows ever stronger. He almost cryptically telling me what I already know. I know the blade deals with the spirits of its victims. The Triumvirate used it to create their own massive army. Even if I kept a portion of every soul, it would still get stronger with every kill. And that, combined with the power of the monarchy inside, immense power. A bit ironic if a portion of everybody the Triumvirate killed was used to end them. We wonder if you possess this ability as well, to see the past, even when you stand in the present. Is that a curse meant only for us? or a gift to be further honed. It eludes our understanding, and we wish to know for sure. When we come back to the mainland, please return to Valinorth. Close your eyes, concentrate on the past, and talk to your comrades. Okay, okay. So we will get more chances uh, to just freely go about to the other parts of the map. Do they speak as they do now, or as they did back then? We think that this answer will be very enlightening for us. And if it is, then maybe you can understand how plot. If we go back to Valinor, didn't Forte want to climb the tree? We should climb the tree with our buddy! How do we know where we are if our surroundings fluctuate? What if we already had this conversation? And this is but an echo. Perhaps we reside at the end of time, simply witnessing our demise. This is too deep for my tired brain. Okay, now, yeah, he's lost me. Sorry, Who's manning the wheel? You're insane. It's just hard, not being grounded in the present. The one downside of visions, being lost in time. Dreaming of that brighter future, and ignoring the present, looking back on the past, and focusing on our mistakes. We experience this tenfold, even mistakes we did not make. When we see your death, we feel pain, a pain worse than death, a loss of hope. That blade falls to the ground, coated in your blood. Comrades scream in agony as they befall the same fate. Then why do we stand there, only capable of watching? We wish to help you avoid this fate. That is our duty. Well, then I hope you're good with a sword, dude. We apologize for the lack of sense, Monarch. Your time is more valuable than that, limited as it is. Perhaps next time, we will make more sense of everything. But try not to forget our advice and our request. We know there is a purpose for all of this. There must be. Together, we will find it, rather than stand here and complain. I nod before leaving him behind. He was suffering, I could tell. I had enough trouble dealing with visions of the future. But how I must feel tortured. If there's anything I could do to help him out, I'd have to do it when I had the chance. It's possible that his body just doesn't know how to handle all that energy. I was trained at a young age to handle it, I guess, so I had a grasp of what I should be doing. It's possible that I'm less trained, so his mind could be lost in a sea of time? Perhaps, I suppose. But that's a topic for another day. I return to the deck, keeping a watchful eye on my comrades. Start the shanty back up, boys! On my watch, they would never meet the grisly fate that Howl had witnessed. For a moment, I decided to stare into the sea, watching the waves and ripples. I could have looked ahead to the future, towards Alarathvieta, our final destination. But for a moment, I considered looking away from the path we've set in stone. The sea continues to move. 
living a life of its own, despite our interference. Pro, you're up next. Pro's at his third heart to heart. Let's go. We're going back down below. I see Pro sitting at one of the beds, striking a match. Pro, are you a cigarette kind of guy, or are you are you more of a classy cigar? You got a spare cigar? He's using. Oh, never mind. He doesn't smoke at all. He uses it to light some nearby candles, creating a laid back atmosphere. The candle slowly fills the crew quarters with a sweet aroma, very relaxing. May I suggest some of Yuri's. Arithmetherapy candles. Hey there, monarch. Don't call me that. Timing, actually. I wanted to talk to you. Did you have booze? I thought we could get to know each other a little better. Unfortunately, our time was cut short back at the Rebel HQ. But this is a long voyage with no need to cut any corners. Mm hmm. So, wanna have a seat? We can get things started. The candles are supposed to be relaxing. Something about aromatherapy. I never really looked into it, but I'm scared of water, so I needed help. It really could probably give you Yuri's number. Ryan, who the fuck is Yuri? Doki Doki. All of my adventures are bleeding together, and it's making me sad. I sit down beside Pro on the bed. Already one fact richer. So he was scared of water. He must not be having much fun. Makes me wonder what, what... I would love to see Pro do a Subnautica playthrough. Makes me wonder what else I don't know about him. He's a mystery. You should tell me about yourself, Monarch. And this is because I'm genuinely interested. I swear. Whatever you tell me, I'll never write down in any books. I'd rather not tell you about myself. I really... <laughs> It's like I'm back, back in my job interview. So tell me about yourself. I'd rather not. I really need this job. <laughs> That's what friends do, right? Confide in each other? I know I always talk about writing books and conducting interviews, but the truth is, this time, I, I want to keep things between the two of us. Okay. I'll take you for that word. I nod and tell him a random fact about myself. Nothing harmful. Just small. I'm a dog liker. I like dogs. I love dogs, actually. They're, they're, they're... We, we... My people, as humans back at my, or back on my Earth Pro, I would often say we do not deserve them. They don't talk like they do here, so I guess that's an interesting thing about these worlds, I guess. Yes, I, I said worlds. That's for more stuff that you're it's probably going to blow your mind later, but there's your random small fact about myself. I'm a dog person. He smiles and starts to exchange facts, and, and we start to exchange facts about each other. He seems really happy. The pressure not to write any of this down and treat me like a subject must be relieving. Everyone always treats me with such apprehension, you know? Like, anything they tell me, I'll turn around and use it against them. That is a part of my business, but it's not like I want to do things that way. I mean, I guess it sucks when it's your job, because where do you draw the line, right? It's like, when you, it's like if you happen to be friends with someone who does gaming for a living, a, a professional YouTuber, let's say. It's like, uh, when you're playing a game with them, are they are they hanging out with you, or are they working? And if they're working, what can you, can't you really do? Hmm. I hope people don't treat me that way after the war is over. I'm quitting this swindler's life as soon as I get the chance. I'll still write, but I won't use information as a weapon. Ever. Instead, I'll use it to help those in need. You know, I've done it before, and... It feels good. Information can either be a sharp knife or a warm embrace. I mean, I mean not, not wrong, okay. Weird metaphor, I know. But like I said, I'm no fiction writer. I prefer to focus on stuff that's real, like people and their actions. 
they ripple outwards, affecting people in ways they'd never know. So just write about the war, dude. Of course, that's something that applies to normal people. There's nothing normal about you, Monarch. No offense, of course. Some taken. You're going to be in charge of the entire world. <laughs> <after this laughs> hey, how about that? No. Oh, God. I got... All right. I have to wait to see who survives my idiotic actions first before I pick someone to rule in my stead. Because I'm going to... I'm going home. Y'all will be welcome to visit, but that's about it. I don't know. Wow. Talk about putting the pressure on. Pro senses this and changes the subject. Can I uh, tell you a little secret? And maybe it'll make you see things differently. You know, so you won't picture me as a bad person. You, you, you pick flowers on the weekend? I can tell that a lot of people do, even if they don't say it. But all I'm doing is helping Domek win this war in the best way I can. It's not my fault I'm like this. All I can do is play with the hand I've been dealt. Mm-hmm. He smiles, but, sudden, uh, but suddenly a wave of fear overtakes my entire body. I shut my eyes tightly. This is the last phrase echoes through my mind. Where did I hear that? Oh, no. This man was uh, in one of those visions, and uh, not all those visions was going good. I'm trying to remember now exactly what he said, what the line was, but... Oh, uh, yes, this series of visions ended with me getting stabbed by a man. A man that, unfortunately, I'm now able to identify as pro. He lets out a soft laugh, and the rest of his hands, uh, and rests his hands behind his head, laying back. My heart beats incredibly fast as this revelation slowly pro uh, processes itself in my head. The final vision the monarchy had given me was the pro betraying all of us. What was going on? Why would he do that? There was this little boy who got abandoned by his parents. He didn't know why, and that hurt him so much. Maybe they just didn't want him. But why? What did he ever do to them? It made no sense, and he hated that. People just suck, dude. He had to grow up on the streets, living on the scraps that other people threw away. It wasn't just his parents, you know. It almost seemed like nobody wanted him at all. That just made things worse. Can you imagine feeling unwanted by the world? Mm. As he starts telling me this story, the anxiety slowly dissipates. Pro was a swindler, right? Maybe he was only pretending to kill me. I don't think Pro could hurt me. There must be a deeper meaning here. He started to pick up on people's secrets. You know, just little things. After a while, he found out that people would pay anything to learn these secrets. As a teenager, he used this ability to live a luxurious life of gluttony and sloth. He knew secrets that could topple cities or destroy people's relationships. But none of that gave him satisfaction, because there was one thing he never knew. Why his parents abandoned him. Why they didn't want him. Did he deserve it? Bro, I'm just gonna say this now, brother. Family's not... Blood doesn't make you family. Blood doesn't mean squad if that th blood is toxic. F family could be whoever, dude. Find someone else. You technically did. You technically have a family. You don't have to worry about the crap from the past. Fuck them! Yeah, I don't have anything else to add than that, other than that. Yeah, fuck them. Yeah, fuck them. You got us. You got you. You got your other bros over there. Fuck them. Fuck the code. It was too humiliating to admit, so he made up another story. His parents died during the occupation. That was much less embarrassing. 
Everybody believed him, and that helped him fit in with a new group of people. This new group of people, the Rebellion, wanted to use his skills for good. They accepted him with open arms, which is something nobody had ever done before. He knew he found his place in the world, and since then, he served his new family. There you go! There you go! He keeps prodding the locals for information, picking up all sorts of secrets. He wants to know why people do the things they do, and what motivates them. He does this so nobody has to suffer like he did. Simply not knowing the reason. I notice he starts to get sad, and tears are forming in his eyes. No f no shit, Sherlock! He's talking, about, he's talking about himself. He's the boy in the story, I can tell. Perhaps telling me as if it was a story made it easier for him. So everybody thinks this guy is bad. A blackmailer. A swindler. He might be right, but it's just how he grew up. He had no control. He had nobody to show him how to act. Nobody to care or love him. I mean, is that going to make me forgive you for going through the mail? No, that's still a federal offense. But you know what? I don't... You know, <laughs> Again. The parents. Fuck them. Blood don't mean shit if it's toxic. You can write that down, Clace. Write it and take it to the bank. Feel free to use it. You have my permission. Until the rebellion took him in, of course. I'm sure you already guessed it. But that boy is me. No! All my actions, however bad, have had a reason. I want to keep going until I learn about my parents. Where are they now? Why did they throw me away? If they weren't proud of me, then would they be proud now? Who cares? Fuck them! I hope you can understand. I really do. I'd do anything to learn where they are right now. I'd follow any order. I just want to see them face to face and finally learn the reason why. That's why I threw myself into this world of secrets and trickery. I thought that if I kept going, maybe one day I'd learn the truth. I guess we'll find out before this war is over. Right, Monarch? Stop calling me that. I nod and give him a soft smile. It meant a lot that he opened up to me. It must suck to know the truth, uh, to not know the truth of something like that. I can't even imagine. But it explains why he's so obsessed with learning about actions and motivations. We talk for a bit longer, about nothing important, before parting ways. Perhaps he wanted to ease the tension in the room after dropping those facts. After we're done, he seems happy, and we seem closer. There was no loss here today. Oh boy! Whew, this is just gonna be an episode of Heart to Hearts. Oh, we'll do this on the next episode before we advance with the story. Ulrich! Ulrich's the guy that you will be having a drink with, probably. I'm just going up and down these same damn stairs. <laughs> I make my way down to the ship cabin and see Ulrich sitting on a bed. At least, whatever passes for about a board somewhat cramped ship. He's sharpening his sword, clearly exerting himself as he does so. Hey there, Monarch. Uh, as you can see, I'm getting ready for combat. I give it two days before we are dragged into conflict. That's a, that's a good timetable. We don't use words to resolve things in Alarinthia. It's always a duel or a tournament. That's all they do. When we are there, we might as well speak their language. That is perfectly acceptable and fine. He uh, he smirks as if the promise of action is exciting to him. He did hate Alarithia, but he also loved combat. It was his nature. He'd hopefully get to tackle a challenge worthy of his skill while we were there. Gotta make the most of a bad situation, right? I'll get to give my sword arm a real challenge. What about you, Monarch? Excited for this? Let's see, it could go either way. It is what it is. Oh my, I would be tempted to do this because I'm always telling people it is what it is. Throw that one away. Fuck that. 
Okay, never mind. Fuck this one, too. This is what I would be saying. Not this. This is the upbeat one. Can't wait to secure that online. This is me. This is, yeah. Marching towards certain death. I've already, I've dipped my dick into that ink to sign that contract. Let's go. <laughs> Ooh, that slap almost made me choose the wrong thing. Reminds me of myself when I was younger. Just be careful, Monarch. Don't make reckless decisions. After this war is over, you have an entire world to rule over. Yeah, about that. Yeah, about that. Not to put any pressure on you, of course. Actually, it's the opposite. Knowing your importance should fill you with hope and resolve. With your authority and that blade, you can do anything. But I'm guessing you didn't come down here for a lecture. Have a seat. There's something I'd like to talk to you about. Oh boy. I nod and sit down beside him. He continues sharpening his sword and I watch. It must have gotten worn out during the battle back at HQ. I don't want to scare you and I'm not really hiding anything. But we were about to go to my homeland. You might hear things. Can you promise me something, Monarch? No matter what happens? Yeah, it depends, but what, what is it? Remember me for the things I've done for you and the Rebellion. No matter what you hear about me or my past, please, don't judge me. I wouldn't judge you based on your past, so I expect the same from you. Ah, uh, okay. I guess that's fair. What... Did you do? <laughs> I nod. I I can afford him that course, uh, courtesy, as long as he's not hiding anything heinous. But he doesn't seem like the type. He truly devoted his life to the same cause as me. Good. Then that's pretty much everything I had to say. I was really worried. I wasn't sure how to handle that topic. So rather than overthinking it, I just shot straight. Thank you. Okay. It was especially hard since you're such a powerful figure. I'd hate to get on your bad side, so I need to be fully open. I have a few secrets, as we all do, but nothing really bad. If you don't find out in Alarinthia, I'll probably tell you myself. In fact, maybe it would mean more if it came directly from me. Sorry, I must sound stupid. I'm not really good at this kind of stuff. Uh, neither am I. Have you seen me in conversation? But no, this, this is fine. Talking about myself is hard. It definitely helps to get drunk. But ale was something they didn't think to pack for this voyage. Maybe I'll pull some strings so the ride back can be more... Lively. Okay, Clace, my guy. Are you telling me the pirates did not pack booze? You're telling me this. You're telling me that these are dry... Pirates. I don't think there's such a thing. He gives me another one of those trademark smirks. I get the feeling he really does use alcohol as a social crutch. He's much more open and lively while under the influence. Is that bad? Yes! Yes it is! I guess it's not my place to say, as long as it doesn't get in the way of his duty. Something told me that our visit to Alarithia would have put him in the spotlight more than ever. I get up from the bed and turn around to face him. He continues working on, uh, working his sword. Sorry I didn't have much to say. I guess I'm a little shy. But it'll all make sense in time. I can promise you that. When that time comes, you need to keep your promise. Y you know what? I again, fair. If I'm going to start keeping my promises of, of completing games, I'll make the promise of not to judge you. Or at least not too harshly. It really depends what you did, Rick. Oh, God, it really depends on what you did. He's really pushing this promise thing. Should I be concerned? I hate for him to use it as leverage in some horrible secret came to light. Thankfully, I see Ulrich as a good person. He wouldn't hide anything bad from us. Right? Well, like you said, it all makes sense in time. All I can really do is go about my business and wait. Suddenly, I'm more excited about our journey to Alan Rithia. Both uh, Alessia and my comrades were slowly opening up to me. In the last few days, everything had changed. What else would have changed? Uh, that thought fills me with both excitement and fright at the same time. Fourteen! 
His fourth heart to heart. We're about to secure this boy's loyalty. I hate to keep cutting you off, band, but hey. 14 paces around the deck of the ship, deep in thought. Everything changed over the, f over the last few days. So this was insane. I hope he's handling it well. I better go see how he's doing. Hey there, Monarch. Stop calling There's me that. something that's been driving me insane. You know how we were all freaking out about Valinor? Yes! Without the heat from the spirits, it'd freeze over and die. I mean, we believed it. But right now, it doesn't make any sense. The spirit realm is a prison, right? Nothing mystical or beneficial. Force Hand, you are now learning that when you start thinking about religion, it doesn't make sense. It matches up with what people outside of Valinorth were saying. We were just superstitious and lived in a unique location. The monarchy gave us visions, and nothing more. We'll have to ask Howell the moment we get the chance. If it's like I think it is, then Valinorth will be fine. No risk at all. As hard as these truths are to believe, they do have their benefits. In talking to me, he, he stopped his pacing. And he looks happy! It's true that a lot of our beliefs were shattered, but that's not a bad thing. A new understanding of the world gave us a new angle to tackle our problems from. At least it'll make Valesa's job as Elder a lot easier. The one major problem she had to take care of, completely eliminated. I know it's stupid to say this now, but it seems like one last gift from the spirits. Yeah, sure, okay. Let's just hope we get lucky like that in Alarinthia. Securing an alliance with barbarians sounds super difficult. They're stubborn in their tradition, just like Valinor is known to be. Okay, I'm not much of a touching person, but it is at this moment where I'm going to have to put an arm around um, my good buddy Fortame, bring him in close, you know, arm right around the, the shoulders, to be like, Fortame, buddy old pal, in the art of diplomacy... Here's here's probably one of the more important lessons. When you're trying to secure an alliance, you don't fucking call them barbarians. <laughs> you don't get off the ship and start calling them savages, you know what I mean? But their tradition isn't steeped in the spirits like ours was. At the end of the day, will they even care about any of this? No! They almost live a world away untouched by our problems no point worrying about things out of our control right maybe we should talk about something we do have power over remember that climbing gear pro gave me money for well check it out is there art for it he wanders over to a bag on the deck and reaches inside a few months later he reduces some clawed metallic objects it appears that one uh, one pair for your feet and the other for your hands they're adjustable so you can wear them no matter what. You don't need to look for a foothold anymore. You can make them yourself. As long as you're strong enough, there's nothing you can't climb, Monarch. I know what I'm doing as soon as we get back. I'm heading to Valinorth and climbing the Grand Tree. I want you to join me. It'll be a good place for you to learn. Deal! I think we have to go there anyway for visions. I know what you're thinking, though. Why would I learn to climb on something so difficult? Well, you have gear now. I never did. It's a huge advantage. The only thing holding you back will be your energy. But with everything we've been through, this should be simple. I think it'll only take a few hours to climb, if I'm totally... <laughs> oh, just a few hours to climb. <laughs> I'll bring us a backpack with a bunch of water. Or maybe we should split that over two backpacks. Don't want to make one of us carry too much weight. He puts the climbing gear back in the bag, clearly excited. It's a breath of fresh air here and talk about this stuff so passionately. Everybody else is so concerned about the war. It's nice to just push that aside. Anyway, it'll be nice to make some history together. Not many people can say they've been to the top of the Grand Tree. Maybe we'll start a trend. The sort of coming-of-age thing, you know? I guess? I don't think I've seen him this excited in a long time. For a moment, it feels like all my worries have simply washed away. They've slipped into the ocean, becoming nothing more than gentle ripples. Fortune starts to walk around the ship again and stretch his body. It's almost like he was uh, preparing for a marathon of a lifetime. Of course, this had to be a lifelong dream of his, after all. I know there's so much danger in our future, but there's happiness too, you know? Lots to look forward to in the end. Besides, I doubt I'll be key to our Alarinthian alliance, so in the meantime, there's not really anything else I can do. I've been practicing my climbing on the netting of the ship. 
People are worried that I'll fall off, but I tell them not to worry. It's very rare that I fall off, and I usually shake it off pretty quickly. I saw some of them get together and make some betting pools. <laughs> it's a pretty boring voyage, so they make their own entertainment. I suddenly start to know why pirates enjoy fighting and gambling so much. When you're out at sea, there's just nothing much to do. It's pretty crazy. I'd go insane if I were a pirate. I just know it. After this war, I think I want to settle down on the mainland. Sailing isn't for me. I can say that with absolute certainty. I'm not sure this is a life for me either. It's just different. Val North is a completely different atmosphere than any of this. Even Mesno is a bit of a culture shock to me and my friends. Can't even imagine what Alarithia and Balchus will be like. I look off to the, the horizon. We'll still be pretty far away. There's no sign of land ahead. How much further to go? Sorry for rambling on, but yeah, there's nothing else to do. I bet the other people will be able to keep your interest longer. But before you go, I have just one question to ask. And I have just one other person to talk to, so go ahead. He stops stretching and walks uh, right up to me with a sly smirk. Do we make it to the top or do we fail? What's your bet, Monarch? And no refusing. We're on a pirate ship, so we need to act like pirates. We make it to the top and we make fucking history. There is no other fucking option. Try our best. Losers try their best. We're skull fucking history. Optimism? I love it. The other pirates didn't share that trait. They seem to actually look forward to failure. The fuck? Though I guess that would be fun to watch. Can you imagine if I fell on the netting into the sea? They'd probably stand by and laugh rather than help. Look at it this way, Forsame. If we fall off the tree, we will probably die. So we either succeed... ...or we splat. Either way, we are still making history. Hmm. I guess we can figure that out when the time comes. Which, as I'm starting to realize, is pretty darn soon. Think of some ideas in your off time, alright? I have nothing but off time. We'll announce the terms before we climb. It's simple. We hit the top or we die. With a smirk and a wing, he quickly runs off on his way. Full of energy, it seems. Or perhaps he's going stir-crazy. I don't blame him, being stuck at sea with nothing else to do. I guess our goal was clear. We'd climb that fucker. That is, if we even made it back from Alarithia in one piece. His ability to stay focused on the positive stuff during wars is admirable. Admirable, if not a bit naive. Hopefully I can join in his positivity. But this blade on my back both literally and figuratively weighs me down. I might leave it on the surface when we climb. Yeah, that would make things easier. And also prime for someone to steal. A lot easier. <laughs> Four teams uh, loyalty scene. Oh yeah, boy. We're going to get the loyalty of this. I don't know what he is. It's not a weasel. I don't know what he is. Mmm. The game will notify you when you have access to the loyalty scene system. Jeez. Loyalty, loyalty scenes can be initiated by clicking the character at the war table. Is Fortane's loyalty stuff going to be easy to serve as a tutorial then? We have one more heart to heart. Then we're ending the episode. When we start the new episode, we're going to hit up this these side stories here. And then hit the uh, the island. Oh, Valesa, our third heart to heart. I step towards Valesa, who has her hands on the ship's rail. She seems lost in thought, but who wouldn't be after recent events? Careful not to startle her, I simply stand beside her, and rest my hands too. You know, for once I thought things were going well. We had an army, and it seemed like our objective was clear, but they outsmarted us. They caught us off guard. We were careless. They always say to be cautious if things are going too well, especially in war. We got blinded by the victory we thought we secured. Nobody thought to question our course of action, or Dominic's orders. And I'm supposed to be the next elder of Valinor's. For the safety of our nation, I need to be better than this. 
I need to plan for every course of action, however unlikely. I just wish things could be clear, like they used to be. If things were difficult, our future was certain. We don't even know if we can secure this alliance. All right, I normal circumstances probably just would have said hey, it could be a lot worse. We could all be dead. But I think I accidentally made her fall in love with me, like near the start of the story. Because back then, back then, this was not a thumbs up. This was just a heart, and this was heart and heart hard to not change. So I didn't know it was like. Friendly, friendlier. I did not know there was romance. So we're doubling down. <laughs> Sorry, Melissa. Here. Boop. We're doubling down and seeing where it goes. You're one percent in, you can't you can't back out. Really? Are you sure about that, Monarch? No. You have a world to save. You can't just focus on me. Another mistake would mean the end of our cause, permanently. I mean, that's why I haven't really had time to think about romance. What good is planning my future if I might not even be alive next week? That would just lead to heartbreak. Heartbreak could be catastrophic. She lets out a loud sigh as we stare off into the horizon. The slow rocking of the ship pushes us closer together. Fuck you, ocean! <laughs> With the distance close, I, I hear her more clearly. There's definitely more on her mind, I can tell. But I can't force her open up, so I stand there in silence. My ears are open to her, as long as she decides to speak. I was so lost in thought, I couldn't sleep last night. I decided to help Alex prepare the ship for our voyage. We got to talking, and he told me something shocking. I'm not even sure if I should tell you this, Monarch. But Stop calling me a monarch. something you deserve to know. Remember how those people recognized us? Which ones? Ah, oh, she wants to be talking about Grizz and Grayson. They both recognized us when we first met. They recognized us too. Immediately. I assumed it's because they knew our parents. But then they told me how they knew them. She closes her eyes and looks up to the sky. Our parents were pirates, Monarch. <laughs> Feared, hated, legendary pirates. <laughs> sure explains their trips to Mazeo. At first I didn't believe it. I was lost in denial, but he kept telling me more and more, and I had to accept it. I always pictured our parents as these perfect, untarnished people. Don't we all with our parents? But they were killers. They broke the law. They pillage. They were part of the reason the Triumvirate launched the occupation. I know what you're going to say. They wanted the idol. Piracy was a cover. And while you may be right, the excuse was still valid. At the end of the day, piracy was running rampant throughout Museo. Our parents played a part in giving them this perfect excuse. Don't you see? And in doing so, they are partly responsible for all of those deaths. We always thought they were innocent victims, but were they really? Honestly, I doubt I'll be doing much sleep tonight either, Monarch. She lets out another sigh, even more exasperated than the last one. Let's sum it up, shall we? Sure. There's no more spirit realm. Yep. The belief system was shattered. Yep. Almost the entire rebellion was killed in action. Yep. We were tricked. Yep. And to top it all off, I'm the daughter of some ruthless pirate killers. Hey, you know what? That one could be seen as a plus. You know, there's nothing wrong with that last one. How am I supposed to process all of this? How will you? Your parents, my parents, Fortune's parents, all six of them. They're not the people we thought they were. What do we do? <laughs> Normal circumstances? Yeah, we brag like fucking hell. <laughs> we're descendants of badass pirates. But hold her hand and, and shut the fuck up. <laughs> Without saying anything, I step closer and hold her hand. She grips it tightly as they both rest on the wooden rails of the ship. Moments later, however, she takes a few steps closer to me. 
placing her, he her head on my shoulder. She wraps her free arm around mine. Probably a little bit much. A little much. Maybe she... Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't have accidentally made her fall in love with me. I don't know how this shit keeps happening to me. Hugging it tightly, I can feel her tremble. An emotion wells up within her. How she feels is understandable. She's going through so much right now. <laughs> I'm just so lost, Monarch. And I'm Ryan. Honestly, part of me feels the same way. At the moment, there's nothing left to say. We stare off into the ocean, together. This was a turning point in all of our lives. How can we handle... Uh, how we handle things would, def would define who we become. I'm starting to become too tired to read. Our conversation ends with that thought, bringing both hope and despair. Well, that was an hour of heart-to-heart -heart conversations. Whoo, boy! Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had fun. When we ne next episode, we're going right back into normal plot. So, yeah, I, I'll say it again: normal plot. Definitely giving a break, saving over. Definitely giving a break to, to some of the side content, maybe, I don't know. We're gonna have to wait and see. I don't think there's, we're gonna have to go through another segment of a whole bunch of heart to heart all at once. Uh, this song is just, like, vibing!